Hello, everyone. Uh, you know, I posted some time ago uh, some cautionary uh, pointers about encounters with police officers. I intended to do one that would be a little bit, have more meat on it, because I just made some light comments, because it is, it is law, and I'm very careful about what I say, um, because I just don't throw words out there <laughs> for wheelchair users to just, you know, be surprised, oh my gosh, no. What I was talking about was your encounters with police officers um, about, you know, if you're a witness to something, that's what it was, just narrow. If you're a witness to a robbery, a witness to a car accident, you know, stick around, give some information to the police officer so that um, you can help in those situations. Now, <laughs> sorry, just moving my camera a little bit. Um, the other issue was, you know, anybody can come and post anything <laughs> on the web. So you have to be careful in terms of when that person comes and posts something that you can fact check them. You know, don't believe everything that you see on the web. And the Supreme Court, uh, and my apologies to Greg if I'm appearing a little bit rude here, but the Supreme Court never said to wheelchair users or people with disabilities to never speak to police officers due to um, the, the problems that have ha occurred. Um, they never said that. Um, I'm going to post what they really did say uh, because, you know, they're reminding police officers of Title II that protects us and instructs them on how to treat people with disabilities. It never said, don't talk to the police officers ever. <laughs> now, if you're guilty of something, <laughs> that's different, you know, you probably don't want to talk to the police officers and, and call for a lawyer. Uh, <laughs> yes, that's true if you're guilty of something. But if you're not guilty of anything, then you got to relax. If you prefer not to speak to the police officer, then that's okay. But please don't run away <laughs> or turn your back to them because that's when things escalate that's when things escalate, my friends. That's what I'm trying to say. Please don't try to put your hands in pockets or pouches or try to run away, you know, because that is going to put you in danger because the police officer is already nervous and, um, and, and could make a mistake in their decision on how to handle the situation with you. So that's why I'm saying, you know, just be relaxed, put your hands on your, on your lap where they're visible, don't move, just be relaxed and speak to the police officer in a, in a regular manner. If you try to move away and just ignore them, and you know, I've seen horrible videos in which um, things escalate and get really bad. I have. And, um, but that doesn't mean that we all run away. No. <laughs> bad idea. So to be exact in what I'm saying, uh, because so many citizens, this is Greg, this is his comment, because so many citizens have been falsely arrested and targeted by police investigations, Supreme Court Justice have recommended that citizens do not talk with police. Now, how does that sound to you? Do you think the Supreme Court is going to go ahead with, with some kind of statement like that? No, my friends. So what do they say exactly? Well, I'll tell you. 
According to the uh, Americans with Disabilities Act, ADA, the Supreme Court has stated that people with disabilities are entitled to the same treatment from police as anyone else, meaning they cannot be discriminated against during police encounters and law enforcement agencies must make reasonable accommodations to ensure equal access to services, including during arrests when necessary. This falls under Title II of the ADA, which applies to public entitled entities like police departments. That's what it says. I'm going to continue because I want to read the whole section of this law. Key points about the Supreme Court's stance on people with disabilities and police encounters. No discrimination. Police cannot treat people with dis disabilities differently than anyone else due to their disability. Reasonable accommodations. Let's say you're arrested or you're in a dark place and you have some hearing loss. You need to be able to see the officer's face. You can request that. Police may need to make reasonable adjustments to their procedures to effectively interact with individuals with disabilities. Okay, that's what they're saying. Context matters. So what the next title here, Context Matters, is what is going on in the situation. I've told you before that law is not black and white. You've heard me say that. Uh, so context matters. What is going on at the moment, okay? So there's a million situations in which, you know, things could be happening. We don't know the circumstances. I can't judge or put a statement out there because it depends on the circumstances. That's what the Supreme Court is saying. While the ADA applies to police encounters, the reasonableness of accommodations will be assessed based on the specific circumstances of each situation. So know that the law is black and white. Is not black and white, sorry. Context matters. The circumstances matter. Okay? So that is the law. Title II of the ADA. The police officers need to study this law and know that if they are encountering someone with um, deafness, they're encountering someone who has a mental illness, uh, someone who is in a wheelchair, uh, someone who's in a wheelchair and has hearing loss, someone who is blind, uh, all those, you know, context matters. And if, if, you know, the blind person gets so scared that he starts whacking the police officer with their cane and just keeps on repeating, I'm scared, I don't know who you are, get away from me, you know, the police officer doesn't, is not entitled to take out the gun and shoot him. <laughs> It just has to recognize this person is scared. They can't see me. They can't swear that I'm a police officer. So I need to, you know, put my gun away and, and just help this person calm down. You know, so it really depends on the circumstances, and the police officers need to be trained for that. There are good police officers, and there are bad police officers. And what hits the news is the bad police officers. So um, I so wish, I so wish that I could do an interview, and I might do it for your sake and for mine, with a police officer and talk about this law, Title II of the ADA, and that's the law you need to look up, and that's what we need to follow. So my statement of, you know, if you're a witness to something, you, you didn't do anything, you know, it was a horrible car accident that you just saw. Stick around. And if the police officer approaches you, you know, still keep your hands on your, on your lap 
and answer the questions. Tell them what you know so they can help out the situation in the car accident. <laughs> Let's not be silly here. Um, I don't know what comments you want to uh, apply, but you know I want to repeat this. Law enforcement agencies are public entities under Title II of the ADA and are prohibited from discriminating against individuals with disabilities. So if they're going into a house and a person is taking a shower or screaming in a shower and they're very scared, it doesn't mean that they take out their guns and shoot them. It means that they walk in cautiously and open the curtain and see what's going on in that shower. <laughs> You know, it's, it's all common sense, and it is, it is based on law. So I just want to clarify that the Supreme Court never did say, do not, if you're a person with disabilities, never talk to the police. They never said that. In any line of the law, they never said that. The Supreme Court did not say that. They said, context matters. And again, I'm saying if you're guilty of something, you have the right to remain silent. That's what the police officers say when they're arresting you. So you have that right. But it doesn't mean the Supreme Court told you to remain silent. No. We need to be responsible citizens and you know participate like everybody else, but with a little bit of caution. There are police officers that are good, well-trained police officers, and there are bad ones. But the bad ones are the only ones that hit the news. And there are very few of them, thank goodness. So uh, I get it, we've been through some bumpy situations in which police officers have done some dumb things and it's, it's not fair to us. Uh, or to people with mental illness or people who are African-American or people from other races, um, they can't discriminate and they need to practice, you know, Title II. They need to learn Title II. They need to read Title II and get it in their brain, <laughs> all police officers. But, you know, maybe you won't believe me still so I might have to look for a police officer <coughs> and see if we can do a video together and for them to speak as a police officer to you on my channel about their true actions, actions that are appropriate uh, for people with, with disabilities. And again, the, the circumstances matter what's going on so that's what I wanted to clarify for all of you this is a delicate subject <coughs> because it is law and I have read to you what the Supreme Court does say and that is really really important for us to go according to the law so if y you feel that it would be good to have a police officer come on to the channel, um, I, I will do that. I will do that and, and see if we can clear, th clear this up. Uh, but I think to have uh, mentioned Title II, uh, all of you can go to Title II of the ADA and read it. <laughs> You're capable. Um, you're capable people, and it's important to know your rights. Uh, so, you know, and they have circumstances. There's a long list here. Understanding disability rights, litigation and police misconduct. And that's for Advocate Magazine, uh, the SCOTUS, Argument Preview, Police and Disability Rights. So there's plenty of information, and it's all going to go back to Title II of the ADA. 
So I want to be very specific. I want to be very clear. Um, I'm hoping I'm being clear. If there's some confusion or you want more information, please let me know. But you are protected under Title II. All police officers need to be trained and have been trained in Title II. And, um, and again, um, you know, because police officers need, need to study uh, a plethora of laws, and uh, Title II is one of them. Again, there are good police officers and bad police officers, and those are the ones that we need to be cautious with. But again, if you start to reach into pockets, you start to get antsy, you turn around and, and start speeding away, you, you know, those are the things that are going to get you <laughs> in trouble, folks. That's why I'm saying just be relaxed, put your hands on your lap, and don't move. Just talk to the police officer facing him. I think one of the most recent ones was a person who stole some something from a grocery store. I can't remember quite what it was, if it was liquor or pills or whatever it was. And he was he had already exited the, the store and the police arrived, they were called. And so what the person oh no, it was he was in a like a home depot place and he stole a toolbox that's what it was and he had exited the store the police arrived he turned around and started driving away um, into the back into the store now it's very unfortunate that the police officer did not know that these wheelchairs of ours can't go really fast <laughs> you would have been able to catch up to him and, and stop him um, but instead, he pulled out his gun and, and shot the person in the back. He, he shot the wheelchair user in the back. So it was obvious, and it was very clear that the police officer was in the wrong. Now, this person unfortunately did not survive the shooting. And the only bullets that flew were the police officer. So that's why I'm saying there are police officers that are good. And there are police officers that are stupid. <laughs> and, um, and the ones who hit the news are the bad ones. We rarely hear about good officers who are restrained and understand wheelchairs, understand wheelchair users, um, and, and do stupid things. Um, and it's unfortunate. So that's why I'm saying stop. Do not run away. Anybody who runs away is going to get, is going to escalate the situation. For the most part, the wheelchair users ourselves, we can't go that fast <laughs> in our wheelchairs. Usually, our wheelchairs only go four miles per hour, for the most part. Um, there are some wheelchair users that wheelchairs that can go faster, but still, a, a police officer can outrun them. So, um, and again, they have to apply Title II um, at that moment. And I am really sorry for wheelchair users who have gotten into trouble with the police officers and have done something or made a movement that caused the situation to escalate. And what I'm strongly recommending is that you do not escalate the situation. Just don't. Just stop. Put your hands on your, in, your, in your lap and just talk. And that'll bring down the, the heat of the situation. <laughs> so again, context matters what happened. So the last person who was a wheelchair user who was shot and killed was this individual. I think it was in Texas, maybe. 
uh, who was running away from the police officer stupidly because he can't outrun him. <laughs> and unfortunately, uh, the police officer lost his cool and shot him. So that's why I want all of us to prevent circumstances like these permanently. Don't run away. <laughs> Anybody who runs away is going to be tackled or shot in the leg. Or So does it make sense what I'm saying right now? I'm hoping you can say, yes, Lisa, it makes sense. <laughs> we will all look up Title II of the ADA and make sure that we are knowledgeable in the law and what protects us, okay? So... Please make a note down below if you want a police officer to come on and do a video with me and talk about Title II um, and how they're trained, uh, let me know, and I certainly will pursue it, okay? So um, I'm going to leave it at that. I want you all to think about this. Think about Greg's statement. Think about the Supreme Court and what they say, and, and let me know. I'm not trying to be rude, Greg. But we need to be cautious when it comes to law and what we say to other wheelchair users. We really do. We need to be cautious. And, and that's what I'm doing here. I'm, I'm reading the, 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 the words <laughs> from the Supreme Court. So um, when it comes to law, I'm going to do that. When it comes to rules and regulations for wheelchairs and other places, I'm going to go to the, the, the mother of all write-ups and read it to you. I'm not going to guess. So, because I want this channel to be as helpful to you as it could be to me. You know, I didn't know anything about Title II of the ADA and police officers. I didn't know until Greg uh, stated, you know, the reason why I made a statement about you know, being cautious, being relaxed, putting your hands on your lap is because of this dude who started running away from the police. So, um, and was killed. And that to me is very, very sad over a toolbox. Over a toolbox, people. <laughs> it's ridiculous. You know, you could have saved up your pennies and then purchased a toolbox or asked for money to purchase a toolbox. You know, I don't want to judge this, this wheelchair user. I'm very sad for his family that he lost his life over a toolbox. Um, but I'm saying we can do better. That's what I'm saying. We can do better knowing that we know the law. Um, and if there's anything I can say or do to make this video stronger and clearer, I'll be happy to do that. Uh, I, I find this very, very serious. And um, I want us to take it seriously to look up the law and, and have a discussion. You know, there's no problem. We can have a discussion about this and, and see if we want a police officer to come on or a lawyer. I might be able to get a lawyer or a police officer or both <laughs> so they can talk to us about, you know, what is the safest thing for us to do if we encounter the police, the police approach us, or we approach the police officer. So in what circumstances they were. So... So let's, let's do it. You know, let me know what you would like the most down below. And I will, I will see what, what I can do, okay? All right, folks, I'll leave it at that. Um, I'm hoping that everyone is slowly getting ready for the holidays, and I will be with you in the next one. Thank you.